Hi guys, I am That Tarantula Guy. Welcome back to the channel. Um, today we are going to have a look at our brachypelmas. First off, this is our smallest brachy and it is a Brachypelma albiceps. We have two of these and we've had them for a while. They are really, really slow glowing. We also have a Brachypelma albopulosum. You can see her there, just curled up in the entrance to a hide. Now, the common name for these guys is curly hair. You get like Nicaraguan and hobby form and true form and blah blah blah. This one is a hobby form. We've had this one from basically the same size as the albiceps and as you can see it is growing into a rather nice sized tarantula and you can see all those fluffy curly hairs. Brachypelma erratum this is the chili flame knee, as you can tell, because she has those beautiful flame patterns on her knees. This is one of my favorite Bracky Palmers. This is Bo, my Bracky Palmer Bo Mai. Really bad hair She really does. She kicks hairs pretty much as soon as you disturb her. <laughs> yeah, beautiful tarantula. The Amelia. Uh, if I can peel this leaf back. There she is. Oh, I don't want to pester her. Because, as I said, she's freshly molted. We literally picked the malt out of there this morning. So, that is the Amelia. Quick little look at here. So, you can see the adult colour starting to come through there now. She's going to be very pretty. She's big. Better go back to sleep. This is one of my very first tarantulas. This is Brachypelma hamori. This is Betsy. Now, Betsy is the only tarantula to have ever been. Now, it was totally my fault. I wasn't paying attention as I was feeding her. And yeah, she completely missed the food, came up the tongs and bit my finger. It's one of the most skittish Brachypelmas that we have. This is Brachypelma Carlenbergi. Very pretty tarantula, but very skittish. So that is why I have a catch cup ready, as always. Like I said in the last video guys, two things you should always have, catch cup and tongs. Recent addition, this is our Bracky Palma Classy. Those lovely pink legs, so pretty. Our Bracky Palma Baggins, see a web in there. As some of you may know, we had another bee baggins, we had a male who sadly passed away just over Christmas. So we're hoping that this one will draw out the female. One of the rarer Brachypalmas, which is Brachypalma Vedesi. She is a really nice size. Really nice size. All our adult colours are there. See all the red hairs coming off her abdomen. 
and that pinkish colour on her carapace. Just such a pretty tarantula. Um, Brachypelma are a family of tarantulas. Um, they are all from Central and South America. Um, the whole species falls under two groups. Now you have the red leg group and the red rump group. So you'll have the red leg brachypelmas, which are things like the Hamori, the Bomai, the Classy. These are the ones that will fit into the red leg group. Then you have the red rump side of the family, which are things like this Vendesi, this Kalenbergi, the Baggins. These are the ones that will have black legs and predominantly red hairs on the abdomen. As you can see on the Vendesi, on her abdomen, she has all these very fine red hairs where she has no red on any of her legs. Whereas Komori, you can see she has red on her legs. Same as the Bomite, red on her legs. The Arata has red on her legs. Whereas this little girl, she doesn't have any. Now, it's important to mention that the entire genus, every single species within the genus Brachypelma, is a protected spe species. Now, that's not because they are endangered or there's a lack of population of them in the wild. It's purely because of the pet trade. Because these are such common pets, the whole genus, Brachypelma genus, they are common as pets and a lot of keepers start their collections with brachypelmas. Now because of this the whole genus has been placed under a protected species. So the import and export of these animals is very highly regulated by CITES which are the regulators of exotic animal exports. So the whole genus has been protected. Which personally I think is for very good reason because these are very, very pretty tarantulas. Very, very good beginner species. And you'll find a lot of beginners We'll start with them just because of how chill they are, how pretty they are, the fact that they take minimal care, and as you'll see in a minute, they're pretty tolerant of most things. Like you can see, I'm just guiding her back and forth on the table here. Now, many keepers, many of the, the keepers that I know, have got into keeping because of one specific brachypelma, which is the Hamori. It was very popular, especially in the 80s, because of a certain film, Indiana Jones. Most of you who have seen the film will remember the part where Indy is going through the cave and he goes through the spider web and gets covered in these things. And he comes out the other side and they're crawling all over him. Now, that is a very, very common misconception as these tarantulas don't spin webs like that. Um, they, they mostly are ground dwelling. As you can see, every single one of our brachypelmas, they all are on the ground. So these are all terrestrial. Now, they are opportunistic diggers. Not all of them. I mean, Betsy's never burrowed. Never. In all the time I've had her, she's never burrowed. But normally if you keep them relatively dry, relatively warm, they will just, as you see, 
they will just sit. Yeah, they will just sit most of the time. Okay, so Brachypelma as a genus, as with all of these that we have here, they will grow to about five or six inches at maximum size. As you can see with Betsy here, she is not far off that. Now, they will normally have body size, meaning the abdomen and the cephalothorax at the front, um, that's their body. Now their body size will normally get to about six-ish centimeters um, maximum size and then they will have their legs roughly about the same. So each leg will be as long as their body. So all of these tees, you can see Betsy, She's the biggest one we have, and she's pretty big. Whereas, as you saw with the teeny tiny Albiceps, she's still tiny. Whereas, Betsy's, she's a big girl. So yeah, as I said earlier guys, they all come from South America. They are all protected animals. They fall under two groups within their family, within their genus, meaning red leg and red rump. As you can see, I think our Carl and Bergie is in a bit of a primo here. She's looking a bit sorry for herself. But yeah, they will fall under the two groups, red leg and red rump. They all come from South America. They will live. Now, this is what one of the things that appeal to most keepers. Um, females of the Brachypelma genus will live 20 plus years. There are examples of females all over the world that have lived 25, 30 years. Now, it's important to remember that the males will not live this long. Now the females, their kind of purpose in life is to reproduce. So they will reproduce over and over and over again over the course of their life. Whereas the males, they will mature, reproduce and die. Now all spiders, all all Theraphosidae, which is the umbrella name for all spiders. Um, they are cannibalistic and they will eat each other quite happily. So quite often during the mating process, the females will eat the males. So the males of this species, they don't live long at all. They will live three, four years, five at the most. They will mature out, they will be smaller bodied, they will have thinner, longer legs. Um, they, most of them will all have the same color. Males and females will have the same colors. They are not sexually dimorphic, but they will have, as you can see with Betsy here, I've got a pretty good view of them here. She has these, two what look like smaller legs on the front of her face. Now these are called the paddy pouts. They are basically like our hands. Now the males, they will have these as well, but on the tip, just here, these will become enlarged like a pair of boxing gloves. Now that's how you can tell the difference between males and females. Now, females you will find will make a 
comb, a nest, a burrow, however they choose to do it. Whereas males, nine times out of ten won't, because they are wanderers. They will, in the wild, wander from place to place looking for a female to breed with. So, as you can tell with Betsy, she does not have enlarged paddy pouts. Now, for males, the paddy pouts at the front are their reproductive organs. They will lay down a web, they will cover it with the semen, and then they will collect it into their paddy pouts. And then they will go off on a wonder, find a female, and then inject the semen from their paddy pouts into the female. Now, this is quite a dangerous thing to do as he has to lift her up and get right underneath her with her fangs bearing down over his head. So it's a real, real dangerous thing for male tarantulas to breed. And this is why quite often you will see females that will eat the male after they finish pairing with them. So yeah, it's not good being a male tarantula. <laughs> There we go guys, this is a close up look at all our brachypelmas. So there you go guys, that's all our brachypelmas. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope there was some info in there that you didn't know. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this, um, if you did, leave me a like, comment down below, let me know what brachypelmas you have in your collections, I love reading about all my viewers and what they're up to. This is our little dog Pickle. Say hello Pickle. Uh, say hello. 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 Oh, it. So yeah, there you go guys. Leave me a like, comment down below, let me know what bracket palmas you've got. Um, don't forget to subscribe. There will be another video coming out on Monday to go with the Beginner's Guide series. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to rehouse arboreal tarantulas on a budget. So stick around for that. Anyway, I will see you on Monday for that video. So yeah, like, comment, click the subscribe button, and I will see you on Monday. Bye.